Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be playing a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. I got this off of Steam. It's free, I think. It was on sale. I don't know. But we're going to find out what's going on in this club, honey, because it, it look all cute and stuff. I'm, I'm wearing my pink today, <laughs> just to match. <laughs> so without further ado, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow my social media links down below. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. You reading? Okay. Someone's saying, hey, hey. <laughs> I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. <laughs> that girl is Sayori, my neighbor and a good friend since we were children. Okay. You know that kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today? But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. <laughs> However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sawyer catch up to me. Is she out of breath or something? I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. You say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. I probably was. That's me, CC. And by the way, CC is my nickname, so I'm gonna put my name on there, okay? <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I mean, I did. I guess you don't have to. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, sorry. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly peckled with other students making their daily commute. This is a nice neighborhood. Everything looks so clean and constructed, right? What, what am I doing? <laughs> By the way, CC. Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm already not interested in joining the clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you'd join a club this year. I did? Did I? <laughs> I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations but where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sarah likes to worry a little bit too much about me, and I'm perfectly content just getting on by the average while spending my free time on games and anime. That sounds just like me, games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or any skills before college. Okay, Mom. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? That's nice. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a meat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Is that an insult? What is that, a meat? Did I say that right? I don't know. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Then don't. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few cubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you would try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself lint to her. No? Oh, I guess when seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Okay. The school day is as normal as ever and is over before I know it. If only. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking at an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sarah wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh, that sounds fun. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. 
You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, but I thought you know. Know what? Well, that you come into my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, Mimi. Sayori is a vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. Oh my god. Nasuki made cupcakes and everything. Cupcakes? Oh, shit. Sign me up. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. Exactly. Why are you sign me up? I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. I can't believe she signed me up for this mess. I don't even like literature like that. Especially since I was in school. Oof. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Ha ha ha! I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, been generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance across the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Girl one? Hmm, she looks cute. Siri always says nice things about you. Oh, do she? Seriously, you brought a boy? Wait, I'm a boy? What? It's too late now. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Cece, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. Damn, if I would've known now, I would've never put my name on there. I just go quiet. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Oh, God. What are you looking at, fool? If you want to say something, say it. Well, damn. Rude ass. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Nasuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly in my ear, then turns back to the other girls. Anyway, this is Nasuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice meeting both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica. Is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Cece. Oh, God. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we really talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in school. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. Gosh. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Cece. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. And how about I make some tea as well? Tea and cupcakes? All right, that's all right. That's new for me. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. What's my Siri going on? Did I say something wrong? I don't know. Ignore that. <laughs> As Sayori mentioned, it's been wide so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Nasuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Nasuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. She up in the closet. 
<laughs> Let me stop that. Still feels awkward. I took a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. I know that's right. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Asuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Of course. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. And I am so cute! I had no idea you were good at baking, Asuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. So Yuri grabbed the first, then Monica and I followed. It's delicious! Sorry, to with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. Whoa. <laughs> I turn the cupcake around my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Asuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. I don't want you. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Nasuki. But why are you thanking me? It's not like I ate you. Haven't I heard this song before? What you mean? I made them for you or anything. Oh? Yeah, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for you, you, you know. You dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Nasuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Exactly. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. This is so specific. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, don't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Eh, I guess. <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles at herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and then smiles at me. Is that a problem? I already told y'all I don't want none of y'all. So what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was forced. I was signed up against my will. I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decide to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and the publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. That's good. And if you encourage others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. I know that's right. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. Duh. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like festivals that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! <laughs> everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Hmm. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they all maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Cece, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, manga. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. 
Oh my god! <laughs> I murder Crowley to myself, half joking. Nasuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The, little, the level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since, since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her co that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Like what? Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you off for a loop? Okay, nerd. <laughs> no offense. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Okay. Oh, I read a horror book once. I, des I desperately grabbed something I can relate at the minimum level. At this rate, you might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Oh? Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. With someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. You call me weak? You call her weak? Not me, her. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, I can't really put it down. True. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Nasuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Nasuki? What? What gives you that idea? You, you left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Ooh, it looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems... Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Ooh. Sayori sidles up behind Yatsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. What y'all doing? I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Okay? Do you have writing experiences too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Nasuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. She got quiet. <laughs> I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Suki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um, yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Cece? I guess. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back on the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly came forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I wanted to join this club. Oh, I sure did. Yuri may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lost my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Oh, but, but I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. 
Cece. You, you all... I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Oh, God. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Ciara wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If, if you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once again. Why am I looking at me like that? Cece, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel like anxiety well enough inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Nasuki clean up their food. Hey, Cece, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the clubhouse and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Nasuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I, will I really be happy spending every day after school in literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. I will bleed. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. Hopefully. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. I don't know how to write no poem. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Well, I'm just glad I ain't got to write. So I gotta guess what these girls like? Um, uh, okay. Infinite? Hmm. Cheer, Sunny. Cheer. Love. Nature. Fluffy. Fireworks, heart, clouds. Clouds. Friends, childhood, romance, kawaii, I knew she was going to jump, <laughs> peace, sweet, fun, giggle, mm. passion, shiny, pink, I don't know, rainbow, Valentine, laugh, is that good? Hi again, Cece. Glad to see you didn't run away from us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. And I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Cece. I hope this is I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive head first into a literature club when you're not accustomed to it. Oh come on, like he deserves any slack. Well damn. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year too. And I don't know if you plan and I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Nasuka, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Is that so? Nasuka finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. <laughs> manga is literature. Okay. Swiftly defeated, Nasuki plops back in her seat. Don't worry, guys. CC always gives his best as long as he's having fun. God, <laughs> my name just throw everything off. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. Oh, you almost set your house on fire once. Is, 
that's so. <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come you and Cece can become good friends too? Probably. Uh, um, Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation you just put me into. Of course. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? W wait, Sayori? Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Um, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture for you was a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it will keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. What you got me? You could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book that she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much? Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect that Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Sayori's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Asuki is rummaging around in the closet. Oh, she in the closet too? <laughs> Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I can always read some of the books you're reading. But I'm feeling a bit too tired to read. I could possibly fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not, but it's not like that at all, you know. We just need to find a way of we just need to find a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Mmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with some, even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come in, can we do the thing to speak to their creative minds? What's this? Sierra is taking this really serious. It's rare to hear her delivering like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food would do the trick? What kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Ah, <laughs> good thinking. Asuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Asuki can make the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Oh, gosh. She just go quiet. <laughs> case it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we all still need to work out the details of this event ourselves. I find myself smiling. That smile full. In the end, Sayora is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayora can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. 
Whoa, it's too close. Whoa! I opened my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. Whoa. I nearly fall out of my chair. Eee, I'm sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Well, fine. Don't say that out loud. I glanced over my shoulder. I glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know. I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's the problem. You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I do it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? I'm clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ugh! I run, my, I, run my fi I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair trying to straighten it out. Oh, that's sweet. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. It isn't? And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, Mimi. You don't even keep you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? <laughs> what? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Think about what? I don't gotta have no boyfriend. Well, she ain't gotta have no boyfriend. She don't want to. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Whoa. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, God. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it was to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You will make me feel worried about it, stupid. Well, damn. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't we? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Oh, God. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs are getting bigger again. Child. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look much... You look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer button up like that? But it's so stuffy. It, it, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. What are you trying to do? Is this a setup? Phew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. True. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm putting it... So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. 
him? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Okay? Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come up. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking this time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Yeah. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote? Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Cece, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sierra still trusts a way to receive her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't we find someone to share with? Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who would I show my poem to first? Does it matter? Let's go to Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. Let's read hers then. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh! S sorry. I forgot to start speaking. <laughs> uh, um. It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so was that bad? No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. W what were you saying? Right. Um, it's just that there are just specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through it myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and its expressiveness are weakened. Once the area finds her train of thought, it is if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you could be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is possibly the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Nasuki. Do you mind if I reach your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Can we just read the poem already? Damn! Take it forever! Man, she wrote this a little bit more clearer. I can actually understand what she said, but damn. It was a good poem, though. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. <laughs> what? I wasn't thinking that at all. I was. But it took you a long time to read. 
Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I, I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you, are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> actually, actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Cece. Really? I must have really missed that point. Well, I suppose you, well, I suppose you did only glance over after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experience in their work. In that case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, it seems to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. There's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you like it, though. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on those things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Okay, who poem should I read next? But I'm gonna leave it right here, guys. Thank you all for watching. It is kind of different from all the games I have played lately. I just wanted to give all them horror and all this screaming and stuff a break for a while and try this game out to see how it plays. So far, it's been good. A lot of reading, though. Whew, my throat dry. But I'm gonna leave it right here, guys. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow my social media links down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.